I've made some spicy meads in the past, but today I think I'm going to make my spiciest mead yet. Let's get started. Hey, this is man-made mead. Today we're making another spicy mead, but this one's different. We're not adding any peppers in, anything to make it spicy, other than this hot honey, which has those things in it. So this is Mike's hot honey. It's only a pound. So we're, we're making a very small portion uh, of this mead. Now let me go ahead and uh, taste test it and show you kind of, or tell you about it. I taste tested it earlier. I'm just gonna get a little drop of it. This stuff, this stuff is spicy. Spicy. It definitely has a kick. Um, it doesn't say, it has like on here, enjoy on pizza, fried chicken, a bunch of lists of things. Uh, I don't know about mead wise how this will be, but that has some real kick to it. So this will be interesting. This right here um, is about two thirds of a gallon. Well, not two thirds, excuse me. This is a half gallon. About a little less, a little more than a third of a gallon of water. Um, so my recipe is here. So I'm using a third of a gallon of water, a pound of this honey, Mike's hot honey, um, that I got from Whole Foods, I believe, uh, a about one gram of um, a, of Red Star Premier Classic yeast, and of course, that's basically it. So let's go ahead and mix it all together. I'm gonna just pour this straight in, and I'm excited for this one because I haven't ever made a mead with hot honey before. I've definitely done it with um, you know, chili with peppers and stuff like that, but I've never done it in this way. So when I saw this at the store, I was definitely intrigued. First step, mixing our honey together. We're going to see how this thing ends up. It's going to just stay traditional. I don't plan on adding any extra fruit or anything. All right, everything's mixed together. Our, uh, starting gravity is five or sorry not five, 1.058, which means we're at roughly about 7.4% ABV possibility. So we're gonna pour this back in. Um, I will be providing this with some nutrients because it's a traditional mead and they don't necessarily have enough uh, nitrogen in them to ferment super well. So that will help. Pitching our yeast right on top. We don't need five grams because really at one gram will cover enough for this half gallon mead. So let me add my, um, uh, nutrients, I'm going to put them all in the beginning and then we're going to let this thing go. Our yeast, nutrient, and energizer are now in here. I must say this, nutrient energizer is super important for mead making. It helps your, your yeast uh, thrive and helps them really ferment better. So you want to have a healthy fermentation, makes a big difference. Um, go check out my video, our raisins nutrients for anyone wondering about that. Um, there is, I don't want to spoil it, but in my opinion, uh, raisins definitely do not qualify as nutrients. So if you're using them as nutrients, use like this stuff, go buy it at your brew shop, go buy it on Amazon. This stuff will be better. All right, let's let this ferment and we'll see if the, um, chili flavor, uh, stays within this primary fermentation. I have a feeling that it might lose a little bit of the aromatic flavor from the primary because of the... Uh, fermentation process and how vigorous that can be. But here we go. Here is the next part of this video. And we're back with our hot honey mead. This thing has finished fermenting. Uh, it is a very, very young mead. It is only five days old right now. I'm still gonna do a taste test and I'm trying to give you guys kind of active updates. So I know for a fact it's gonna taste a little bit weird because it's five days old, but I still wanna do this. Took a gravity reading. The gravity reading is at 1.000. And just to let you know, we started at 1.05, uh, looking at my number, 58 is what I see. So we're um, completely fermented out. We're probably at about a, I believe it's a 6%-ish. I'll make sure and put it on here. But let's, let's do a taste test and see um, kind of where this is tasting like right now. It's probably gonna taste a little yeasty because not everything has fallen out of suspension, but that's okay. Here we go. Smelling it, it smells like normal honey. There's nothing, no heat to that. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit of like a cap smell, uh, which is a pepper mead. Okay, whoo, there's the heat. The heat takes about one or two seconds before it hits you. You get some um, honey character, not really sweetness, but like 
floral side, earthy side. Uh, I'm getting definitely some a little bit of that, a little bit of the orange blossom, which is the kind of honey we used. But then the heat comes through at the very end. Yeah, that is a wow. It's a very evolving. Okay, it's like a wave of heat. It's not necessarily like a constant heat. You think of like a pepper. It's just a kind of burn you for a second and then kind of goes away. That's really not too bad. Definitely young, has a little yeasty taste to it. Um, you can see just by looking at it, it's not necessarily super clear and that will, it will clear up over time and that's okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rack this into a different container and we're gonna let it sit for a little while longer. I'll do another taste test, probably about two or three weeks to let all everything fall out of uh, suspension. We'll see if the flavors melt some more and then we'll go from there and decide if we wanna add some more honey or what really, what really needs to happen with this mead. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack it over. You don't have to, I'm not gonna record this portion, but uh, I did wanna give you an updated, uh, an update on this thing. We're back now. It's been a few more weeks since we made this hot honey mead and here's a little taste test of it. We need to discuss what we're gonna do next with it. So this is with about three more weeks of age. Yeah, ooh, the heat really, it takes a second. Um, Ah, interesting. Whew. Okay, <laughs> the uh, the initial taste, it's kind of weird. The initial half second is very mead-esque. You get honey, um, you get a very floral note from the honey itself, um, and there's some sweetness in there, which is nice. But then you start to get the heat and it kind of like gradually hits your face. Yeah, it just grows. The second, um, Second sip is not nearly as strong. I mean, definitely feel it down here. Feel that heat. Um, what do I wanna do with this thing? I think it needs to be a little sweeter to be more um, palpable for a lot of people. Even myself, like I don't think I would enjoy a, a huge glass of this thing as it is because it's very, uh, I don't know, the heat is just so overwhelming. And not that I wanna take away the heat, but I would like to go ahead and temper it and try and figure out how to maybe um, make the forefront flavor as strong as that heat. So my plan, I think is gonna to be to go ahead and back sweeten this thing. There's lots of ways you can back sweeten, lots of different sugars you can use. You can use um, table sugar, you can use honey, you can use maple syrup, you can use um, stuff that's not necessarily uh, fermentable for yeast. What I wanna do is I wanna bolster honey character. So I'm gonna put honey into this thing. In order to do this though, I need to stabilize this because it's still technically an active fermentation. The yeast are at the bottom, even though I racked it off, the yeast can, can live down there for a while. And if I put more honey in, they'll just reactivate and go. So what I'm gonna do is put some potassium sorbate, which is a stabilizer. And uh, I'm gonna put it into here and I'm gonna wait about 24 hours and um, then from there, we'll go ahead and add our honey once we see that the, you know, sorbate's mixed in. All right, well, we put our sorbate in and it is time to go ahead and let this thing set for 24 hours and then we'll add honey to it. So it's been 24 hours and I went ahead and bottled it as you see here and um, it was a pretty simple process. Now that I've finished bottling it, I have a little bit here. I got one whole wine bottle, 750 milliliter, and two beer bottles out of this little less than half gallon. And uh, I think that's pretty good. Now I will put my labels on it, which I'll show you on the screen right now. Um, I don't have them printed out yet, but I will. That's what they look like. And uh, I'm definitely excited to let this one age for a little bit. The final gravity for it, because I did take a gravity reading, is uh, 1.012. After the primary, oh, you'll see here, uh, the, or the primary, it started out 1.058. After the primary, and it, it ended at 1.000. And um, after back sweetening, it ended at 1.012. So it's got some sweetness, but that sweetness there is again to help contrast to the heat from the honey. Go check out the Mike's Hot Honey. Um, I will try and find a link to it somewhere and put it down in the description. It's really, really interesting. And just that one pound was enough to really flavor that amount of mead. So you don't need a lot. It could be something interesting to mix in with some other variety kinds of honey. So 
Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll be back with some more wild meads, some normal meads, and everything in between. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.